All right, everybody. There. Today, we are gonna find out All photos. what makes this Greg is. Burns tick. Wait. We are here at uh, Nature's Image Farm and just went through um, putting on some apigard on some of his colonies. So we got a little bit of sunlight left, but uh, we're gonna find out that's watching reels. What makes Greg tick? So let's get to some questions. Oh, wait. Brian, it sounds like you're walking all over a sticky floor. Greg Burns. Hey, well, well hi, Brian. Wow. What brings you here today? I got questions. Questions? Hey. Oh, boy. I didn't study for this test. All right, everybody. We are going to... A couple people saw I did... 20, I don't even think we got to 20 questions because we were eating good food with Jose. That's right. We sat down, questions. I couldn't even pronounce the food you guys were eating. Quesabirias. What? Yo quiero Taco ah. Bell. Yeah. What's your favorite movie? Wizard of Oz. What? Yeah. Wizard of Oz? Yeah. Like it goes from black and white and then she walks, okay. it opens okay. up and it goes okay. into color. It's okay. like, whoa, what is going on here? Okay, all right. Wizard of Oz, everybody. Wizard of Oz. It's your very first, and, and I asked this question before I'm on the I'm nervous, screen. man. These are deep. Your very first beekeeping memory. Very first beekeeping memory. One that really just stands out. Not just, <clears throat> oh, well, I, you know, I remember opening up this hat, but one that <laughs> really stands okay, out. Okay, so... Um, one of my early mentors, I learned how to, how to raise bees um, and without equipment, right? Not saying that's the smart thing to do, but it, uh, you learn a certain intimacy with mm -hmm. working bees that way. Uh, and I can remember after killing my bees for so many years, um, I went down there um, and there he is. He's, he's behind the hives, he's working and he you know, comes over, holler at you, know, come, come over here. Mm -hmm. I'm like a little puppy dog, right? My bees have been dead all winter long. I have no bees in the spring and it's like April and I go down there to learn from them, spend some time and I jump out of the truck and like a dummy I run right over and I just put my head right over the hive and there he is working them and I just get blasted. Do 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 and then so here I am with all these bees just stuck in my eyelids just all like this just and they're all crawling like do 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 right and he just carries just, he just he doesn't lose doesn't doesn't miss a beat just keeps on talking. Now here I am, um, trying to learn uh, from, from a mentor, and I don't want them to think I'm a sissy. All right, so I'm just slowly, I'm pulling each little bee out and the stinger, and I'm thinking, oh my God, how many more of these bees are there? And I'm pulling them out, and I'm pulling them out, and I'm pulling them out, and I take my T-shirt and try to use the little fibers to pull their stingers out, and then I just start talking to them like nothing ever happened. He didn't miss a beat, pretending like nothing happened, but I tell you what I learned, I learned how to engage a colony rather than invade a colony. I spent three more days learning there and uh, I didn't get stung one more time. I got it all up front and out of the way. Now I did have to take my eyelids open to drive home, but hey, that's a, that's a story for a different that's day. That's another story, that's another story. <laughs> if, if you walk out and you crack open a hive and you could have any any person Dead or alive, join you to work in a hive. Who would that person be? Oh man. Hmm. That's a tough one because half of me goes to a beekeeping person, and then half of me goes to just someone who I'd want to spend some time and share that with. Mm -hmm. um, well, let's do let's do part A and part B. Uh, someone who was a beekeeper, uh -huh. um, I, I would love to spend a little time with Brother Adam, um, just to just to get in there and figure out what was it about those bugs in a box for him, um, and get that opportunity to work side by side with Brother Adam. Um, the other person would be uh, my grandpa, that, that was an old country preacher, mm -hmm. um, and share that connection that I have with the bees with him. Um, and uh, just be able to share that with him, and it's that would be that would be cool. Mm. Yeah. Good, good, good. Favorite meal. 
favorite meal, hands down, without a shadow of a doubt, is Susie's biscuits and gravy. Susie's biscuits and gravy. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Favorite movie. Wizard of Oz. All right. I was seeing if you were going to change that up. No. Wizard of Oz. Wizard of Oz. Because we represent the yeah. lollipop yo. Now, I got to think of a good one that will stump you. What's your favorite book? Mm. There's a lot of good books. There's loads of them. I'm not a real big book reader. Mm -hmm. um, there is a couple very valuable pieces um, of information. Uh, I'm going to go old school, mm -hmm. and I'm going to go uh, Old Testament book of Proverbs for just classic wisdom. Um, but another book that also shaped a lot of how I think um, about things um, is um, One Straw Revolution by Masanobu Fukuoka. Um, and that is uh, kind of a deep, deep dive into um, kind of um, a lot of the mental approach surrounding um, organic agriculture. In the One Straw Revolution, there was one, there's lots of quotes, but there was one in there that really rings true and is important, I think not only for beekeeping and life, but for farming but is when it is understood that one loses joy and happiness in an attempt to possess them, the true essence of natural farming will be realized. The ultimate goal of farming is not the cultivation of crops, but the perfection of human beings. Hmm. And to me that's cool because that takes things a whole different level where the art of beekeeping or growing crops or gardening or mm -hmm. grafting fruit trees or on and on and on, yes it, it is brings you to that thing. But like we've said over and over again, that bees are just a conduit to people. Mm -hmm. So, One Straw Revolution, Masanobu Fukuoka, check it out. Deep dives. So if I attempt to Google it, it's gonna take me probably half hour to an hour. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Just like These anthropomorph are good questions, man. Just like anthropomorphize. Did Nailed you see? it. You did it. Now, so you're talking about farming. Where did the whole idea of the contrary farmstead? Oh. How did that? All right. How much time we got? <laughs> so. We can edit. We can edit. We can edit so, this for, uh, yeah, for lifetime television. Um, what led you? Like, what, you know, was it? Was it one day, was there a moment where you're like, you know what, I got to get out of the city. I got to, I don't want to live next to no skyscrapers and, you know, I need to go out and have a farmstead. Well, as Susie and I figured out what we wanted out of life, we quickly realized that we had bought into what we thought was the American dream. Um, and it was nothing more than the American scheme. It was living financially behind, way beyond our means happen to have brand new cars and a cookie cutter brand new subdivision house and the biggest screen TV and the list goes on and on and on. Um, as we were growing up in our marriage and growing up just as an adult, we got married right out of high school. There's a few things that we knew we absolutely wanted in life. Uh, we wanted to spend as much time as we possibly could with each other, moving in a, some kind of positive direction. We wanted a large family. The large family part came later, but we knew we wanted a family, and it grew and grew and grew. Mm -hmm. As as our family grew, and uh, we were just seeing what was kind of going around with our kids' education, we decided to take our kids' education into our own hands and start homeschooling. We were growing a garden um, in a cookie-cutter HOA subdivision in the backyard. Um, we even started raising ducks and chickens there, too. Um, and we wanted to get out to a piece of land. We just wanted to get out and, and, and just get back to those roots, get back to what was important. We've always kind of lived our life a little contrary, not intentionally to be contradictive, but it was just outside of the normal ebb and flow of things. Just, we, we were okay. We weren't intentionally trying to meet, uh, marked by the beat of our own drum, but we were 100% happy um, with taking the risks and we weren't concerned with folks' perception of us. We knew why we were doing the things that we were doing, what was important for us, and we just went in there head on. A little bit later in life, um, 
trying to sort all of these things out. Um, I got into a really bad car accident that I shouldn't have walked away from. Mm -hmm. And in that moment where life is flashing in front of your eyes and you are literally living in this nanosecond reality mm -hmm. and your life is flashing in front of you, I'm thinking of all of my kids and I'm thinking of Susie and I'm thinking, I'm thinking that I'm dead or I'm dying and I'm wondering, have I did everything I could for them? Are they going to be okay? Have I set them up? Have I taught them well? Are they going to be good people? All these things are kind of going through your head, going through your head, going through your head. And next thing you know, I've got this, this guy cutting me out of my truck and yanking me out and I'm, I'm out on my own two feet. And I'm, I look back to see miles and miles of traffic all jammed up behind us uh, and miraculously escaped um, with a, just a bruise on my thumb. Um, the car I landed on top of also escaped with just a bruise on his thumb. Same thumb, same spot. That was weird. Different story for a different day. But I realized from then forward that every day was a gift. Every, mm. every morning that I wake up on my own two feet and I'm breathing is a gift from God and I'm going to treat it accordingly. So Susan and I really got busy on doing whatever we could to get out of that American scheme um, and, and get out to a piece of ground and learn right alongside our kids, teach them those important life lessons, how to raise a garden, um, how to raise animals, how to butcher them, how to be self-sufficient, um, try to build in some financial and resiliency. Um, and then that got us into beekeeping. Um, and as we got into beekeeping and that entire kind of farm um, uh, passion and those ideas, that's where Nature's Image Farm came from. We try to work with nature rather than against it. And it seems as though that is contrary to the mainstream format for agriculture or um, education um, and even the way our society is trained um, to behave. Everything that we do is contrary. Um, and to me, it's important to remember that. Not that we're trying to be different, not that we're trying to be contrary, um, but we're proud that we can walk a walk that might be different than other folks. Um, and feel good about it and feel proud about it, raise our kids um, in a certain way. Um, and that's, that's really how that entire logo um, came to be. It goes back to our Scotch-Irish and Norse roots. Um, you see a tree of life there and you notice you have the roots below. Uh, those roots below is a reminder that, of what we're grounded in. The tree of life rooted in um, those waters. Um, it also speaks to all those that have come before us to give us um, the ability to have that tree that's rooted um, on that tree. You know, you'll also notice that you, um, you've you got uh, a, a tree that looks like out of season, um, but you'll notice a couple things. It has um, leaves on it and it has apples. It has fruit. Each one of those apples represents our kids and also me and Susie. Mm -hmm. um, so there's nine apples that still have its leaf. Um, and one of the, you know, scriptures that are important to us is that you will know a tree by its fruit. Um, and so here you see a tree that looks like it's out of fruit, still bearing fruit. Um, and it's a reminder to, to be mindful of, of the things that we're doing, where we're spending our time, um, and the, the fruits that we're producing. Um, I could talk all day about that, but yeah. there's also a cardinal. Um, and it, it's, although that is the state bird of Ohio, um, the cardinal goes back to our Appalachian hillbilly roots superstitions where when we see a cardinal, um, it, it's a reminder, we, we like to believe that it's, it's um, um, one of our ancestors or relatives that have passed that are coming in to, to just check in, visit, and a reminder to always keep them in mind too. And then you see that old skep, that old beehive um, on that branch there. And um, just like in life, you can have new beginnings, um, you can actually you know, graft onto your family tree something that maybe wasn't there. You can graft on a new start. Um, or something new and different and beautiful that can produce fruit. And so where it looks like we have a, a skep or a bees uh, grafted to our family tree, that's uh, bees are an important part of um, who we are, what we do, um, the fruits that we produce. Um, and so it's cool to have bees grafted um, onto our, our family tree. So that's kind yeah. of uh, all that Interesting. in a nutshell. Yeah. I never knew that. I just realized they're looking at that, I, I counted the apples. I think probably if there um, was a, there is, there, there is a scripture that I think um, describes that better than, than any way that I possibly could. Um, 
and it's Psalms 1-3, uh, And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season, his leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. And then it goes on to, you'll know a tree by its fruit. So to me, it's important to keep that as a reminder as we, as we put our hearts and our minds and our hands to things here on earth that we, we make it count and that we, be that we be the lighthouse when we can and do what we can for others. You say be the lighthouse, and you're always, you, and, and we've done, we've done, oh my gosh, I don't even know how many streams. I, Coming up on a year, Brian. Coming up on a year. That's there might even be a big announcement with that coming soon. That's for a later later date. We'll discuss that on a Wednesday at eight p.m. Eastern. Uh, But you all you always say for these others, like when you're talking to Bob, you're referencing. You always you say, well, you know, you're a lighthouse for many others. Right. Did you ever? Just when you were first starting down this path, did you ever think that you'd be sitting where you're at now and you being a lighthouse for how many people? With the learning yard and all year, I've been fortunate enough to be able to attend a number of those and just the message that you're getting out there, the knowledge that you're spreading, how many folks are you a lighthouse to? Did you ever picture a day would come where you are that lighthouse for, and there are probably hundreds of people? Um, It's not even... I don't really have the words for something like that because I don't. There, I don't really there, look at myself as being the lighthouse or or that. I am just simply that structure mm-hmm. um, that I hope and pray God's light shines through in whatever way it's supposed to. Mm-hmm. Um, and I I don't. It's important for folks I think to to understand that that it's not. When, I, when we say be the lighthouse, it's not be a certain person. It's not be a certain thing. It's not replicate or, or, or meant. It is, is literally where, whoever you are, whatever you are doing, let that light shine through you. Let God's light shine through you. And that's being a lighthouse. Helping folks when you can um, without strings attached. Just doing what you can to help folks. Um, it, it's, it's an honor and it's an absolute blessing for anyone to even say that Greg, you're a lighthouse, and we're we're not. I, I guess I've got a hard time, ex, ex, you know, acknowledging that or or, or accepting in that. And I'm, um, you are a very humble person. I, I've I've gotten to, you know, know you more than some others. Um, been able to come down here and spend a lot of time with you, and have realized that. The amount of knowledge that you share with how many people is just, you know, it's for someone to take the time out like you do and share the learning yard and just everything on the YouTube and everything and stay humble like you are. I think of you like, you know, like you had your moment sitting with Bob. These are some similar moments yeah. for me where you're that humble person that just has this vast amount of knowledge, you know, and you're not putting yourself on a pedestal. But, you know, you are for a lot of people, you are that lighthouse. The, the, the thing I think that I always, um, is that I, I always try to keep in mind is that, you know, when we do that for others, when we be the lighthouse, when we, when we reach out to help someone, um, those are things that we we do because we have been in a situation and someone was a lighthouse to us. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's something that we can do to help other folks, knowing that they're going to do the same thing for somebody else too. Mm-hmm. Deep questions. What's your favorite ice cream? Did you see what pecan I did there? praline. Pecan praline. Okay. Yeah. Did you see what I did there? That was good. Just okay. shifted gears. Which favorite movie? Wizard of Oz. 
I'm 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 sticking with the with, with the Wizard of Oz, man. It's it's classic. What's your favorite color? Gray. Gray? Yeah. Gray. I like gray. Huh. Susie's cooking gray. I can't even pronounce the book. What, what One is Straw it? Revolution by Masanobu Fukuoka. Yep. Did you know that? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I like it because it's like this, it's only like this thick. Okay. I have a really, I've got this weird thing. Um, since we're, since this is like real talk, real talk. I, I struggle with reading. Yeah, I'm not a reader. Um, I when I when I read something, I find myself going to this weird mental thing where I'm asking myself, "Are you paying attention? Are you reading? What did you just read?" And then I don't remember, and so I have to start over and then read again. And by the time I get through the same page three times, and I realize I'm spending more time asking myself if I'm comprehending what I'm reading than I'm actual reading, then I put the book away. That's an that's a weird way to be. There's certain things like the book of Psalms, like certain like proverbs, psalms, certain things where it's like okay, I can just do the, read this much or that much or this, um, 100%, and I can and I can retain okay. that. But like beekeeping books, mm -hmm. I don't think I have read a single beekeeping book all the way through. I've tried. I can't do it, um, and so I just go out and learn from the bees, and that's best that I can do. There's lots of pictures in bee books. I love the pictures. I can't. This, I, I, I am. I am. I'm just not a student. I guess I don't know. So we're here right now. Where do you see all this in five years? Oh man. You know we. Wow. Where do I see this in five years? When I look back at just the last year. Yeah. Um. Or or, or when we first started off several years ago selling nukes out of literally the side yard of the homestead, you know, we were having fun, and that was cool. And then it grew to the old farm setup, um, and everything exploded. And then we thought, what happens if we want to grow, or if we want to do more, and then the opportunity to come out here to a much bigger farm with buildings and infrastructure, we were blessed with that. And then I felt like, you know, God gave us some direction and some ideas on, on what to do next, and we just did what was on our heart, and then the next thing you know, we have you know 30 and 40 people here on Saturdays learning hands-on um, here at the Learning Yard, where we're able to be a lighthouse to folks, bring in the military veterans, the folks that mm -hmm. buy packages and nukes from us. We can learn right here in the shop, talk about stuff hands-on, take it right out to the Learning Yard, and that has exploded. And I that was just something that I had no idea. I wasn't even sure anyone would show up. Um, mm -hmm. it's been an amazing opportunity to just meet people where they're at. There's, there's no politics. You know, there's no club to join. There's no politics. There's no fees. There's no dues. It's just the bees are the bees are the, the bees are the conduit to the people. Mm -hmm. You know, it's 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 old fashioned fellowshipping where we're here. Let's talk about bees. Let's learn about bees, and then let's just hang out and support each other in life, whatever that, that might look like. And that's all we're doing here. Some people say, you know, what you do um, is more of a, of a non-denominational B ministry mm -hmm. than it is um, B education. Because, yes, the Bs are the focus, um, but all we're trying to do is help folks be successful, help them give them some tools that they need. Um, and we, we do it in a way to where, yeah, we, we raise nukes, we raise queens. You know, we are... Um, financially sustainable as a, as a farm and as a business. Um, and so we come into this from, from that experience set. Mm -hmm. But this is not about us. When we get up here and are, are helping and sharing and trying to teach folks, it is not coming from a place of authority. It is not coming from a place that say, well, you have to do this, or if you don't do this, or mm -hmm. we are just sharing what we are doing, what works for us, um, and let folks... Um, use those tools for what, whatever their path and context and scale um, looks like. If folks want to go out and see um, queen rearing, it's right here. If they want to see what nukes are like, it's right here. If they want to see what a horizontal hive looks like or an apame hive or raised bees in five frame boxes, it's all here. And it's and it, what I love about it, it has nothing to do with me. This is just the way we, we raise bees successfully. 
Um, and just because we do it this way doesn't mean somebody else should. To me, all of this happening um, so fast, um, to me, is, is like a little bit of a sign that we're on the right track. Um, so moving forward over the next few years, we're, we're going to be focusing um, a lot of our, most of our efforts on just the people aspect of it. Try to get people here um, if this is where they want to be, um, to help them um, take that next step with beekeeping to be a little bit more successful. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that's going to just keep growing and growing. The supply shop um, is growing. You know, this, there's stuff you guys can't see behind the cameras here, but you know, we went from just ordering stuff and having it show up, you know, FedEx and UPS to having semis deliver pallets of stuff. Um, and it's an incredible opportunity to, to get folks great products that we support, that we use at prices they can afford and they can pick them up here locally. Mm -hmm. um, so to me, it's kind of like a little one-stop shop to where we are not trying to be the authority on anything. We are not trying to dominate the market on anything. Mm -hmm. We're just trying to be us, do what we do with the bees and share that experience with folks that find value in that. Where does that go over the next five years? I, I, I can't even imagine. You know, we're talking about expanding, and right now the problem is concrete and, and growing all this out way bigger for next year. Um, I don't know. What, what, I, what, I, what I can say is when we keep the focus correct um, and we, we, we do things responsibly and sustainably, the growth just happens. I'm looking forward to seeing wherever it goes. The cool thing is the people that we meet, like you, um, the YouTube channels we collaborate with, sharing all these things together, that's the cool YouTube part. YouTube channels. Brian, this guy here um, has one heck of a, of a beekeeping uh, YouTube channel that you're dying. What's, what is it, Brian? Look at him. What is it? <laughs> Look at him. What is it? It's your favorite YouTube channel. Oh, no. You're going to put me on the spot. Favorite YouTube. I find myself going in spurts. Right, mm -hmm. and so like when we get some like face to face time, like when we were like face to face down with like Bruce and Mike and Randy and Lisa and uh, Son of One, um, and then all the folks in Tennessee too. Then I find myself like trying to catch up real quick and binge and watch sure. just to kind of get you you know get familiar with with what what they're doing and all those kind of things. Um, and then of course um, you know and always in constant collaboration with you and Bruce, I always try to like try to check out some of the stuff that you guys are doing too, just so I know where you're coming from. Uh, of course, I love Bob Benny's um, YouTube channel. I'll try to watch that too. Um, but I um, I just, I wish I had a lot more time uh, to, to do all those things. So I, I would say, what is, your, what is your favorite YouTube channel? I would have to say, Brian, Castle Hives. <laughs> took all that for him to earn his 20 bucks I told him to say that yep it's true though because what you do on there is cool you're just being you you're sharing your experience you're also very humble and you have a fun way of sharing what you're doing with your bees that is non-confrontational it's not authoritative it's not my way or the highway and that's valuable for folks to see whether they're beginning or they've been doing it for a long time folks gravitate towards that approach because they just want to share with you your experience mm -hmm. no matter how many hives it is. I watch guys that have thousands of colonies on YouTube. I watch guys that have two. Mm -hmm. To me, it's not about how many colonies you have, how good you look on the camera, the quality of the stuff. What I like to watch is, is when folks are having fun with their bees and they are just mm -hmm. genuinely sharing yeah. that experience. Yeah. Well, On that note, we got people staring at us here. I hear tractors running that need to put up. It's dark. Running. It's yep. dark. Thanks for coming out today, Brian. We had fun today. It was good. We got into um, Izzy uh, had the camera. We were getting into all kind of TikTokies and uh, uh, Instagrammers lives. YouTube live. The YouTube lives. Uh, we got into all that stuff. We were throwing on Apigar treatments, goofing off. I mean, there's, there's a hot new beekeeping dance, apparently. They have to go to, I guess, the TikToks and the Instagram, tick, tick. the Nature's Image Farms, and tick, then tick. the Tick Ticks. Is that what it is? Tick Tick. You can see me and Brian just having a good old time out there with the bees, you know? So I appreciate you coming out. What, what will be taking, well, what event is, gonna, is going to happen 
December 21st, 8 p.m. Eastern. Ho, ho, ho! Wow. This is just a teaser. This is a teaser. Let me just say, you've never seen anything like it. Very likely the biggest with the most amount of people that you've ever seen um, that is just the absolute, my most favorite people in the entire industry, all in one place to celebrate a very, very special thing that you'll announce where? On a Castle Hives Live. On a Castle Hives Live. Or a Bruce's Bees Live. Yep. Or Nature's Image Farm Live. What I do know is you don't want to miss it. Yeah. Uh, and it is the culmination of an entire year's worth of collaboration, which is a big deal. We've been doing this, this collaborative thing for a year. And really, a time is flying by. I can't that's even believe to, it. Yeah, that's hard to believe. Yeah. 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 Well, keep watching that announcement's coming up. Details, all that other stuff. And Greg, Where? Do above? Do you like do the. Is it a link above or is it below? Or is it in the descriptions down? It's there. It's in there. Keep watching. Nailed it. <laughs>